September the 13th, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. We've been determined to like this episode number 569. <laughs> Woo! Oh my. It's a party. <laughs> it just happens <laughs> that, that, that it's that. And, and, and it's also one of these. Let's talk about sex. I mean, technically, five is an orgy. So. Yeah, true. True. Yeah, you got an orgy of 69s. Well, well, kind. you wouldn't because you there would only be, be two, out. and there'd be an odd man out. With well, you five. could have a sixty-nine, and then like three others, or maybe maybe it's an orgy. It's actually a total of seven. There's one one pair that's sixty-nine, and then uh, another five that are doing a thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and, okay. And you could have inside side that you don't know. Yeah, inside the five, you could have like, like four of them. You could actually have a sixty-nine uh, while there are two behind, and then maybe a, a fifth and doing a thing. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You could technically have like a triangle, or not a triangle, like a pyramid kind of thing. You know, sixty-nine, one on top of the other, asses kind of up. Then one's fucking one, one's fucking the other. So that's four people. And then that you got one that's kind of on like straddling the 69 couple and going back and forth between the two mouths. Because guess what? They're probably going to be busy. Or, or just be, the one that's behind the one on top uh, could be behind. It, it could have somebody behind them and it'd be like a, 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 like a line, you know, a train. I mean, mm hmm. There's a dick and an ass, a dick and an ass. He's got his dick in a mouth, which has, uh, whose mouth is on a dick. Who's got uh, and the dick has a, a dick in his ass. If you haven't figured it out by now, we're horny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, I'm not actually horny. I'm just trying to picture these things and I'm just talking about things sexually. You don't have to be, be horny to be to talk about something sexually. Also, uh, also, the fact that I am currently holding a uh, block of wood, which is not actually a block of wood, it's a neat little dice uh, vault thing from Warm Warm Gaming. I just like the smell of it, so it's my like little like this is how I'm like fidgeting with my hand. I'm using that. Not that that's sexual or anything. <laughs> it, it's it, it's one of the things I have in my own little bubble. Okay. I'm assuming that was the segue. Yeah, 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 it was kind of. Anyways, Gary, <laughs> what are we talking about today? <laughs> we are so smooth with these transitions, I tell you. Mm. Transitions? What transitions? <laughs> okay. So for those that recall that are part of our Telegram chat, ding! Um, I had posed a question and asked about sex pods and everybody got a love. <laughs> What's that? And everybody was confused. Well, I got a lot of lovely, like, you know, responses that were kind of, um, a wide variety of ideas. Uh, it seemed possibly consensus that people were not quite sure what I was referring to at all. Mm -hmm. um, hence, I was like, "Okay, this kind of confirms we're gonna have a little, we're gonna have a show like Ooh. about a thing because I think people um, had not heard of this before, mm -hmm. and I was thinking, you know, maybe this is this is an up and coming thing, maybe not. Um, so we're gonna have a little discussion about it. Um, mm -hmm. Another common term would be a sex bubble." So, uh, honestly, I had not heard of these before until I heard of these at work, of all places. Um, and it was in something that was online, and it's frustrated me greatly because I can't find the document 
because it's probably in my office and I am at home. <laughs> um, but one of the guidelines was about uh, instituting, creating a sex pod. Mm. They actually said sex pod. And then I think in parentheses, they wrote bubble. And <laughs> so, which is interesting because it was kind of the reverse of what a lot of other materials online kind of make a reference to. Really? But then I found this really interesting article from Berkeley University uh, here in the U.S. that um, is called How to Form a Pandemic Pod. And it's um, – I'm going to be honest. Like anybody who wants an interesting read has a few minutes. <laughs> I suggest that you read it. Uh, it's not one that you're going to skim over you know, in a quick second. Mm. That said, there were specific paragraphs that I've taken out, and this will all be on our website. Um, Not in so I, new Roman font, by the way, which they have it have it in. It is an awful, awful uh, uh, typeface. It should be abolished from mankind, along with Comic Sans. <laughs> okay, fine. Hey. You're not a fan of their HTML text code, so. Um, I just question so their font choice. There's a couple of things uh, that I thought we might talk about, like a definition of what these things are, um, the safety implications, potential uh, for actual existence, and if there's any interest among us. So um, in these paragraphs, um, it kind of explains a quarantine pod um, is an effective way to get our social, emotional, familial, and sexual needs met without unnecessarily endangering others or ourselves. So pods are meant to be small, self-contained networks of people who limit their non-distant social interactions to one another. In other words, they're a small group of people whom you share air without using breath control precautions, such as masks. Hmm. Um which I found interesting. Uh, it goes on to explain that pods or bubbles or containers or quarantines, which I've oh, never heard that. Lord, honey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this, uh, this is a this hashtag is quarantines. Yeah. We're all in this together. Are you actually going to put that as one of the hashtags? Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like using odd ass words. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it goes on to explain that pods aren't are not just ways for people to have social connections within a pandemic. Um, they also serve important epidemiological purposes. In other words, they limit the size and the spread of uh, an outbreak that's occurring. So it goes on and says um, that's one reason why in the Bay Area, meaning San Francisco Bay Area in California, um, where the authors live, public health officials recommend that pods be no larger than 12 people who live across three households and that pods limit their non-distant social con contact to one another for at least three weeks. So it kind of gets specific, but yeah, I, I was like, 12 people? Like, that's, that's, a, that's a dozen. That's a variety. Um, you know, just saying. Um, it goes on in another paragraph to say, despite the centrality of sex in our lives, many of us are ashamed of having sexual needs. This is tragic because we should be no more ashamed of needing sexual contact than we should be of needing food. So be honest with yourself and others. If you want to form a pod to meet sexual needs, say so, rather than concealing or minimizing that purpose. So, um, as first, a first off, out of context, when you say 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 uh, uh, say what was your question? It was it was should we talk about sex pods or something like that? And I'm like, I'm thinking it's a thing, like an actual, like tangible item, like mm -hmm. it's an object, uh, uh, yeah, or, or or something like 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 the Tide Pods, except yeah something sexually positive yeah. and, and not toxic for human consumption um but great yeah. for cleaning stuff um <laughs> uh, but uh it, it, it just kind of like out of context when you say pods i always think of a thing like an actual yeah. like, item so and of course what I... of course owen says huh so sex box are a thing meaning it, it's like a Oh, the such and such a yeah, it's a thing, <laughs> not an actual object thing, but a 
Wait. Okay. So my question in Telegram was, hey, Entourage, potential show topic, quote unquote, sex pods. Your thoughts? Question mark. Because I just wanted to see, like, if a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, I totally know about it or blah, 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 or I'm in one. You know, I mean, if people had um, kind of a lot of affirmative, like, responses, I'd be like, well, maybe, you know, we could have someone on to discuss it further or something different. But um, and then I love how <laughs> DM said, should I Google sex pod? And I thought, oh, that might be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a good question, actually. I think, Let I me think just our, do that right now. I think when I actually did a... Because uh, this morning, when I opened up the doc, there was no link to the article. So uh, I, I just was like, oh, well, well fuck it. Uh, I'm just going to quickly Google this. So I do sex bubble, because you have bubbles in the titles. L-P-A-S, bubbles. Slash right. Pops. Uh, and then I'm like, oh, okay. Makes sense. Uh, now... Uh, sex pods, however, I still think could end up being an actual, like, item. It could also be something so, where, where you could have sex in an enclosed space. So, With the big old sex... patch door. <laughs> so, Sex Pod was an American punk rock band made up of three women from Hoboken, New Jersey. Oh. They were active from 94 to 2004. They were ahead of um, their time. Let's see. Da, da, da. One of you just ran with the right girl movement and lesbians saying they're not, quote, they're not playing cookie cutter puck rock for kids who think it started with Green Day. Oh. Oh. A critic described their appearance as, quote, defiant women who wear their love of making heavy, loud noise like a badge of honor, end quote. Saying the truth, thing it comes out loud, going in a complete tangent from the actual topic based off of words. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, and there's an Urban Dictionary for sex bots, so we're going to read that, too, because why the fuck not? Um, <laughs> oh. A... <laughs> mm-hmm. Go ahead. No. You said a you were going to read it. A sex pod. Uh-huh. <laughs> a sex pod is a word to describe a short, sexy person. So a sex pod, like a mini. <laughs> and then there's a there's a quote. Oh, no, it's not. Whoa, Betty, look him. He may be 4'11", but he's such a sex pod. Womp womp. Basically, a sex pod there's is that. a pocket cub. <laughs> Well, there's that's one Based way to look at it. Yeah. Tangents by Damon. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. You're so welcome. Because I will admit, when I saw the word sex pod, um, okay, good to know. Um, I thought of um, like a a um, like a sex toy. Like you've seen like the like Tinga eggs that like. And what have you that you just like jerk yourself off with? Um, I was thinking kind of that. I was also the other side of me, the other extreme. So there's that part, and then the other extreme was literally like like a cocoon or a place where you put like two people to have sex in, and they're kind of like encapsulated in each other, kind of maybe like a rubber kink fetish thing, something along those lines. It's like um, an you've seen like the back. Like the vat cubes where people kind of like can be in them and they're all like encompassed and can, you know, like that thing. So it kind of went there. This is definitely none of that. So, <laughs> like the sleep pods. There, oh, that's, that's the way. Yeah. yeah. Sleep pods, but meant for sex, where you could easily just open it up and rinse it out. <laughs> Gross. Um, and you can close it <laughs> and just press the button for which ends up like superheating the inside to kill off bacteria. There you go. Mm. Oh, so with the sterilization the func function, do not do while someone is occupying. Oh my. Okay. So, so that be. being said, um, now that we've kind of defined it, uh, safety. Mm. Yeah. 
this is one of those times it, this is one of those times where it's like you know the old adage safety in numbers not exactly the same well i mean it, it could still apply though because mm -hmm. One of the things that I'm seeing a lot more that comes up is about mental health um, as the pandemic continues. We're now mm -hmm. six months into it here in the U.S. Um, by most accounts, you know, given um, when the caseload really started to increase, like for mm -hmm. community spread. And, you know, people are tired mm -hmm. of the pandemic. They're tired of wearing masks. They're tired of being cooped up at home. They're tired of being on Zoom calls all the time and working from home. Um, you know, and while we've acclimated slowly to the change, and I think there's less resistance now, there's less, um, you know, uh, people freaking out in retail locations about wearing a mask mm -hmm. and, and all that. I think that, you know, folks are just, you know, um, they're getting fatigued. Yeah. And with that comes behaviors that people like they kind of put aside safety or mm -hmm. recognizing that like this activity may not be as safe or what they're doing. So as an example, go out to brunch today, the second location we end up at and one of the wait staff, 50% of the time I'm watching them is walking around and they have their mask leaked down on their chin. And this person actually said to us when they greeted us, when we walked in, they were talking to us at first and then they moved their mask down. I said, do you mind? And I didn't respond. Because I'm like, I'm not giving you like a, you know. A pass. A, right. I think, you know, one way or another. Because I'm mm -hmm. keeping mine on. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it, it's one of those things that, you know, I, and I didn't have any indication from them that they have like a medical condition or something that it's a problem for them to be able to breathe through a mask. I think they're just, they just don't like it. Like, yeah. and by that I mean, like, it's un, it's physically unnatural for us. We are not yeah. a species that, you know, protects our our, you know, nasal and oral areas often. So it's, you know, disturbing to have fabric on there and stuff, you know, and not be able to breathe as mm -hmm. easily and freely. And if you have a sinus infection, it makes it all the more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so because of that stuff, I think that's one of the things that people, you know, who want to be safe yet um, step outside the lines of true safety that's where I think this concept of like quarantine pods or pandemic pods um, as, you know, possibilities, uh, these sex pods or sex bubbles, like creating small grouping or circles of individuals that are intimate with each other. Um, and by this, like, I really think it's self-contained. By that, I mean, like, like you establish this grouping and this is the group. Like, and we do not go outside of the group. Um, mm -hmm. So... I don't know. Like we've we've kind of talked previously about like you know a buddy system, um, friends with benefits, you know that kind of stuff, and I think this is a, a piece of that. But I don't know if this was really out there in the discussion. Um, you know, like we just recently talked about glory holes and and safety during COVID, that kind of stuff. And to me, that doesn't yeah. fall within this concept of what we're talking about mm -hmm. now. Yeah, this is to me. I mean. What I what I'm gathering from this is kind of like a like you said like this these are the people that I trust that I believe for the most part to be um, taking care of themselves or to be remaining healthy or something along those lines or hey we've all got tested at the same time we're all negative or whatever kind of thing if you want to go to kind of go that far so let's keep it within this circle. So that we can interact with each other, whether it be, you know, just hanging out or watching TV or playing games or whatever, or, you know, for the sake of let's talk about sex, like, you know, oral or fucking or whatever. Like, it's a way to kind of have a small set of boundaries to where it doesn't... Um, where you don't feel you don't you feel the risk is lower for mm -hmm. you rather to catch COVID or anything else we can kind of go that far but at least you know you know either protect yourself from COVID or to lower your risk for potentially getting it um it's 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 not necessarily 
safe, it's safer. Safer, exactly. It, it, it's you still know. perfectly viable. The likelihood is, is, is definitely lower, but because of the number of people, it's higher mm -hmm. than if you had had completely uh, severed. Yeah. And, and it just in general pods, not necessarily sex, but pods or bubbles, we already have this in the form of families. So mm -hmm. if there's like mom, dad, two kids, and they, they've done it, they're going to be in their, they probably got in their homes, they bundled up, quote unquote, and uh, I'm sure that in that entire household, they're not necessarily wearing masks, they're not wearing masks all the time, and they're still, you know, hugging, kissing, you know, just the normal family affection uh, sort of thing. And this is the same type of thing, except dealing with, uh, well, more intimate uh, mm -hmm. uh, things. So it it I would almost say that this is uh, a, a philosophy that's taking. Well, hey, we're kind of already doing this. Mm -hmm. In the fact that families who people who or just in general people who live in the same unit whether it's a mm -hmm. house or an apartment or or whatever um are are already doing this it's and then they're it's based off of some of these recommendations it's like allowing even more people into that that bubble i've actually heard bubble like i was watching uh the us open mm -hmm. because i wanted to but <laughs> that was because of my job but i was watching the us open and they mentioned um that they had had a similar type of thing. They had a, basically a bubble of personnel, uh, uh, people who were running the event and the players. And these were the people that they were going to allow the bubble. And I think they're all just spending it all in in the for the, the time of it. And they were like, we're going to do like two weeks here to make sure everything's fine. We're going to do constant checks, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Bubbles and pods, while we're doing this in a let's talk about sex episode, isn't strictly in regards to sex. So, right, but it, it can be, I think it's it's applicable. Like, you can create a sex pod, a sex bubble of your choosing, depending on like your relationships, like how open your relationship is, those type of things. Um, if you are currently in a monogamous relationship, then this concept completely like does it make sense in terms of like sexual intimacy. Mm -hmm. However, it might make sense in a broader scope. So like in that long article, there's a couple of people that are quoted, and I, I like this one in particular. Um, so Jen, who's from Oakland, California, said, I live in a group house, so our bubble is bigger than most folks. We include residents, lovers, lovers' housemates, and lovers' lovers. We don't social distance with these folks, and we do outside visits with anyone else. Our total bubble is about 15, give or take, though it changes. And so I understand conceptually, it's like, first of all, we have a big household. Like, people come and go, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, they're thinking, like, in terms of, like, before when we talked about polycules, like, how you make the connections. Mm. And you're talking about the other people that they're connected to. So they, amongst all of themselves, like, kind of within their bubble, so to speak, or their pod, they are not social distancing, not wearing masks, like because they mm. are considered a, a kind of a closed unit, basically. And outside of there, anybody they interact with, like if someone comes over, it's like it's an outdoor activity, they social distance, so on and so forth. Mm. So okay. it, it's applicable beyond like the bedroom, quote unquote, as a bad reference, but yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. So and, I, and I, I would think... say that that it's uh, per, perfectly reasonable uh, yeah. association in in these times to help you know those people who need more of that that social interaction that actual physical the touch instead of being socially distant. Um, right. Uh, it, it's a great way to help relieve that anxiety. I'm not sure if that's the right term um, mm -hmm. of. Uh, not having that be being one of those who I'm loving this um, uh, personally uh, because I'm just but 
I, I I'm not necessarily mm. missing anything, but that's me. This is not right. necessarily something that's necessarily going to affect me as much. Although, you know, hey, if I decide, hey, I want to have sex, maybe talk to some of my former playmates and be like, hey, uh, how many people are you playing with? Did I join your bubble? Or something like that. Well, you bring up a, a really great point, Jeff, because later in the article they do say, um, they make reference that it's essential for everyone that's within a pod or a bubble, you know, whatever you want to call it, that they share you know, and are acknowledged on their current medical situation. Mm -hmm. Have things changed? Where are they at? Um, and to us, as um, um, you know, as, as identified, self-identified MSM, uh, for men who have sex with men, like this is not necessarily a foreign concept because we've had conversations and negotiated before intimacy in some cases. Like, you know, when was the last time you got a test? You know, is there anything that I need to know? Um, you know, and not everyone out there has that kind of a conversation, yeah. but, um, and a lot of people yeah. tend to think it's like, oh, it's awkward or uncomfortable. And I'm like, actually, you're the one that makes it awkward and uncomfortable. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm both sides of it. Like, you know, when you're with somebody, it's like, you know, the last thing you're kind of thinking about is be like, hey, what was the last time you had an STI panel? You know? Um, <laughs> but, you know, and having a conversation with someone, you know, it helps to show like, you know, there's there's a there's another layer of uh, communication that's happening by having that conversation, asking those questions. You are learning about the education of yourself and the other individual. Yeah. So, you know, if they know nothing of what you're talking about, then that helps you assess the situation. And you may or, you know, may not change your perspective on what you want to do. Yeah. Um, you know, and then. So this idea of having this openness of communication and talking about like where things are at, I think it's good, you know, that they kind of bring this up and basically say, you know, you should be considering that everyone's kind of on the same page. And especially if you know who all the, the individuals are within the mm -hmm. grouping, do any of them have comorbidities and to what severity has any of yeah. that changed? Because that will be a factor. So like, it, like as an instance, one of the symptoms of COVID is diarrhea. Diarrhea in and of itself does not mean you have COVID. However, it combined with other symptoms could be, you know, revealing that you have it. And that's, you know, kind of where you, once you kind of cross a threshold of, we say two or three or more symptoms is probable to go get tested. But, you know, you could just have some bad food. You could have a lot of stress and anxiety. You could have IBS. I mean, you could you could have a whole laundry list of things that give you the poops, you know, <laughs> and that's that, you know. So it's not something to panic about. But if if people are acknowledged of that, they can kind of help explain it. Especially like if you live in a in a household, you know, and yeah. you see that someone keeps going to the bathroom a lot, oh, you might no. kind of be like, "What's that about?" <laughs> You're all right, I mean, <laughs> right. That's like the third time. Um, right, like you know, did somebody slip an X-lax in your something or other? Yeah, yeah. It's been, yeah, and I, I, you know, it's been. I kind of, I kind of feel like you know, it. I feel kind of not the same as like Jeff. Like I'm trying to keep as much like not doing a whole lot outside of like Gemini, just because there's this general concern. And I agree. Like it is a little exhausting you know um we were just talking the other day about like trying to plan a trip thinking about planning a trip or doing something and i'm sitting here like we both kind of were like well where would we go and what would we do and we're all thinking the same thing like no matter where we go there's not going to be a whole lot to do because everything you know a lot of things are closed and and what have you are you know limiting access etc cetera, etc cetera. um and then you know once you go or come back i i don't know about you but i would probably you know quarantine self quarantine for you know right. some time because yeah. that's just not you know i don't want to get get it to someone else and you know Jim lives here, so if we both get it, then, <laughs> or if one of us gets it, <laughs> like, there's a right. more than likelihood that the other one's going to get it, so, um, but 
that has been, you know, trying to think of those things and trying to think of like what you could potentially do and, you know, who do you go out to? Like I have friends that I would love to go see, but I'm also thinking there's all of this shit going on and I just don't want to essentially, not just for myself, but probably for them too, you know, potentially open up their bubble as it were, you know, I don't know what they're doing um, or who they're doing. I should also say, um, and that kind of can affect like what happens and what, you know, whether you go and see people, I personally have been trying. I know there have been a few moments of like, you know, letting certain people in and then limiting that. And this kind of falls along the same lines of this, um, bubble or sex pod or mm-hmm. whatever, whichever word we're using. I like sex pod. I don't know why. <laughs> well, I that's like just it. Pod. Like, I think the, the, the upside is that there's some possible different words. I mean, I think we've all kind of agreed quarantines is a bit much because um, mm-hmm. that makes me think of athletics. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, sex can be an athletic sport in a way. Uh, so, you know, so in terms of potential, I definitely think it's there, but um, I'm an organized person. Like mm-hmm. I think critically analytically, like, so to me, this makes sense. I think functionally this will work if you have someone like that or have multiples of people like that within the grouping. If you don't, then I could see where that could be challenging. Um, You know, uh, so to me, potential is an absolute yes. Like it can be done, Mm -hmm. Um, but it does take work. It takes take effort. And then in terms of interest, um, I think it's about, you know, how much you weigh the pros and the cons. Like, yeah. So, you know, last weekend I was visiting, you know, some of my best friends, but I was aware that in doing so, I'm connected to them and they are connected to other people. Mm-hmm. So their parents, their, you know, siblings, their family, you know, their, you know, who they may potentially come into contact with is, you know, if I'm a asymptomatic super spreader, which means I'm positive, but I don't know it and I don't have symptoms. And then I'm giving it, you know, basically mm-hmm. to everyone I'm coming into contact with that I'm not being, you know, 100% safe around through social distancing and, you know, community mitigation and all that kind of stuff. And then that becomes an issue. So I try to be selective and careful about who I'm around and what I do, you know, that kind of stuff. And so, like, I think that's a piece of the interest part. Like, if yeah. you are, if you're already aware of the concept meaning mm-hmm. the definition, what the safety, you know, measurements are, and that, yes, it's a possible thing, then you kind of have to make the decision, like, where and when is this um, acceptable? And so I would not be the least bit surprised if I hear about, like, couples that, like, kind of group up. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like, one couple and another couple, and, like, they're kind of temporarily, yeah. whatever you want to say, they're exclusive to each other. Um, maybe there will be three couples. I don't know. Um, you know, or... You know, maybe there's two or three couples and they all share, you know, one single or everybody's kind of <laughs> in a play, you know, like, no judgment here. Um, yeah. Maybe a little jealousy. But, you know, <laughs> so I mean, you know, but that's that's kind of what this whole idea brought about was, you know, it's like, OK, I, and I think it was at least I felt it was important to kind of let people know that there is a thing and maybe not many people know about it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I mean, agree. Like, so, you know, um Potential for me um, is definitely there. I like the idea. Uh, we've actually been, um, within the past few weeks, we have a couple that we've been, that we used to go out to dinner with when, you know, every, pre-COVID, um, that we're now, like, having over at the house. Um, you know, it was just the four of us sitting at the dining room table. You know, Gary, I believe, has seen it and whatnot. And... We just like, we play board game. Like the last time we actually played a board game, we all had hand sanitizer and stuff like that to kind of help with that, you know, situation. And then we ha- we have like, we'll order pizza or we'll, you know, just, you know, bring something in like Chinese or whatever. And it's been great. And the main reason it's been great is because it's, it's people. Right. Yes, granted it's two people. But it's people. <laughs> it is something and, other than you or Tim. 
Yeah. Well, and and but that opening up resolves mm. the stress issue. Yeah. Like that's the thing I think that maybe some people aren't aware of is that, you know, when you are so siloed, mm -hmm. whether you're a single individual or a couple or a household, and there's only so many individuals and it's kind of a small grouping, there's a stress that comes with that, like because of the enclosement just naturally. Yeah. And so to have, you know, an outlet to be able to talk to other people, because I'm sure I'm, I'm guessing here, Damon, when you and Jim talk with this other couple, you get to hear their stories. Like they get mm -hmm. to tell you things that you're not aware of in their experiences. And then you can kind of, mm -hmm. you know, have laughs and commiserate and, you know, bond and connect on a way that and all of that is vitally important to our mental mm -hmm. health, you know, let alone, let alone the physicality of it. I mean, oh, yeah. it also does your, your body good in a way. And I'm not inferring that y'all are like Boinkin. I just mean like <laughs> by being together in a space, you know, and having a conversation with something, you know, if you were to be studied, you know, your heart rates would elevate, you know, certain hormones would change. Like it's just good to give body a workout kind of in that way. I think that's why a lot of individuals are struggling during this time because we are a social species, yeah. despite how we may, you know, in some ways be okay with being alone to be a hundred percent alone is a whole other thing. So whether we're interacting through chat or emails or video or phone calls in person, like all of that is dynamics of a social mechanism. Yeah. And for some people it can be kind of um, elevated, you know, and, and like meaning they do it more and it may be that, it, you know, it's more satisfactory for them. It does more to stimulate them and, you know, and uh, make them overall better or mm -hmm. feel better. Yeah, the fact for me that it was, I just, like, just having that, like, small little thing, and I'm actually trying to bring this, like, one other person in to kind of help me out, because I want to see them, and they wanted to see me, and I'd like, let's try to do something to where it can work. So we're going to meet, like, actually outside on my porch and just, like, have a little chit-chat, because we haven't had a conversation in person in months. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of nice to have. Um, on the... Since this is let's talk about sex, let's get sexual because, you know, kind of thing, you know. Um, I see the potential of something along these lines. You know, it would technically be safer. It wouldn't be completely safe, but it would be safer than like random hookups are, um, you know, going out to like a, a a bathhouse, a video store, a bookstore, the pickle park, whatever you want to call it. It's, you know, because you don't necessarily know that person and you don't know their history or those people, depending on how, you know, freaky deaky you are. No, no judgment, no judgment. But, <laughs> you know, if you, you know, if you connect with some people and you kind of make this spear sex pod of like similar interest and you know everyone you know their ordeals like Ugh. they maybe don't go you know maybe they're all local and their parents live further away you don't have to worry about them seeing their parents for a while because their parents are staying home because of whatever like you can you know you can kind of figure all of that out um i can see the benefit of that mm -hmm. um um, especially now, you know, um, hell, I see the benefit of that, like in general for any, you know, any time, like having just like a set number of people that maybe you play with on, on occasion, I can see the benefit of that. Um, I would be interested to kind of go to the interest part for sure. Um, I can see there's another factor for me personally, because it's not just me that I have to think about. Mm -hmm. um, I also have to think about Jim and um, and Jim also, you know, on the flip of that, Jim has to think about me, you know, so we can't just like pick random people. We'd have to like, it'd have to be, you know, people we would either one or both would be someone interested in and make that connection. Yeah, I, I think this is something that we've been us as as Gary said actually earlier but probably in different words is we we've been doing this for years slightly mm -hmm. differently uh but in regards to uh, uh stis and hiv mm -hmm. although hiv is technically an sti i don't know why we always 
to always list them separately, but that's the way it is. Uh, it, it's it, it, and it's it, it's because we're we're thinking of it that way. There's a lot of people who's like, uh, look, uh, I know this person is negative, tested regularly, uh, update this one is another another uh, friend with benefits or person. Uh, this is a fuck buddy. I only limit to the, to this this many people. Uh, and uh, trying to keep to the, to that, a lot of people have been doing, and of course, it's the ones who just tore themselves out. But that's you know, something completely different. Uh, that's no bubble. <laughs> but we we have thought of that in this community uh, because of everything since the uh, since the the eighties with the AIDS epi epi epidemic. I can speak really again. Um, <coughs> And, and onwards so this is still something we're doing it's just because of how covid works and that that we're not it, and it's less about sex it's about socialization in general we have to be more exclusive in who we include in that bubble that we are even having instead of just this is the bubble for sex and then i'm open everywhere else we have to then change that to be this isn't just about sex it's about other things as well it's great if yeah. you have a have a regular gaming group that you have that that you have and it's less less than 12 as long as any dinner groups that you also have who knows maybe there's a crossover maybe you have a dinner and D, &D group i don't know whatever uh then hey there's a nice social bubble and if you're really lucky there will be a love another level of that Venn diagram, and there will be a crossover on sexual tension and release. So, so D and D and in B D and DSM. Sure. <laughs> or D and D gaming, and then D and D, you know, in a in a in an orifice, you know. There's that. It, it's where you're, where you're basically play, where every game you have, you throw in a strip element. And then as people start losing clothing, they have to do more, but they've lost all their clothes. What do they do? Oh, no. I'm going to have to do something to save this. I need to suck this anyway. one stick. I'm going to have to bend over um, the table, etc. B, D, and E, S, M. Here we go. Thank you yes. for saving us with, with a, a proper initialism. <laughs> Not abbreviation, so, initialism is the difference. Yeah. So I mean it's 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 food for thought. I think um there may be more to come, no pun intended, um uh -huh. in the future with it. Then again, maybe it'll fizzle away and you know it's like fetch and Gretchen, you're not gonna make it happen. So <laughs> Yeah, I could, you know, I, I like I said, I see the benefits of it. I can also see the complications. Because, like you said, like this is good. There's some ideas and thoughts and planning and 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 knowledge that needs to be, you know, implemented. You know, if you're depending on your job or you know what have you, maybe you're getting tested more often, so you kind of know more off you know things. But you also have to keep track of like your personal health and the personal health of those around you. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I mean, I'm you know, I think Gary, not Gary. Jeff and I, you know, have the benefit. We're working from home. So, like, we don't have that factor to come in, that comes into play. Like, we don't have to worry about going into work, being around a certain, you know, number of people for seven, eight hours a day, five days a week. Like, we don't have that worry right, right now. And, again, while, you know, I know, Gary, you have that, you know, you are not working from home, that you're also working in public health. So <laughs> my hope would be, <laughs> yeah, my hope would right. be that like, like they would be like taking care of themselves and, you know, no precautions and kind of can see everything on the board and like, no, Hey, like maybe right. I should take care and, of you. Know, I'm, mm -hmm. And a lot has, has changed over the course of the pandemic. I mean, like my other desk over there is actually my at home office. If I need to work from home, mm -hmm. um, like that was a development that came along, um, you know, as preparation, it wasn't a consideration before as part of like pandemic planning 
Um, but all the pandemic planning prior to COVID was based off of like influenza models. And mm -hmm. this is not like the flu. So it, it kind of upended all the concepts and, you know, the, the preparations in a way. And so now nearly all of my coworkers have like work cell phones and laptops and nice. the ability to like work from home. Like some of them, if they don't have internet, they've got like a, a mobile hotspot. Like, you know, we just, we had to like up the game in a way to be able to provide that. So should things not go well, and it really becomes, you know, significant community spread and there is a risk or a danger or should one of us as coworkers become, you know, contracted and then mm -hmm. everybody's got to kind of, you know, crack down and, and um, isolate, then we have that, the capability. Yeah. So I think all of that applies also in, in people's lives. So that is the concept of the show. Bubbles, pods. Yes. No, maybe so. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. Pop, Absolutely. Don't pop those bubbles. Yeah. No. You know, don't this, pop those bubbles. And you know what? This is a great time to wrap up the show. Mainly because I think Skype is being a dickhead and starting to give me really bad video from you guys. Oh. Yeah, it's it's not good. But you know what? <laughs> it, it, it's more about the audio than it is the video, right? Anyway. I guess for folks, that's the end. As I probably already transitioned to uh, play ways to contact us. I'm going to move my thing over to this screen so that I can just look towards the camera and step over to my uh, left here. <laughs> uh, but to play ways to contact us, pop over to cubsoutloud.com. Leave a comment in the blog. Do you have a sex pod or a social pod or just a pod or a bubble or whatever you want to call it? Uh, leave a comment there or shoot us an email. It comes out loud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail. Tell me about our your pod, sexy pod or otherwise at 361 COL talk. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, you can follow this pod on various social media outlets at comes out loud, the appropriate place of URL of Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube. You can also join our social entourage chat where we ask about these type of topics especially out of context, which is great, uh, at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. And when I said said great there, I'm like, I love it. Okay. Just want to, want to clarify. Uh, you can also subscribe to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col so you can see when we're planning to do these shows as soon as we figure it out. You can also get various uh, merchandise, such as t-shirts, such as the one Scary is wearing, which is just our current logo. I used to say the E3 logo, but which it technically is, is our third version of a logo. I know. Uh, but it's, it's it's our current logo. Uh, or uh, you can get something from this Mashy collection, such as a Consent is My Foreplay shirt that I'm wearing. By the way, apparently tank tops are out of stock. Oh, uh, can, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, one of my players uh, in the Bears and Dragons, uh, he likes tank tops and was very disappointed when he couldn't get a consent to my foreplay shirt in um, in a tank top. Possibly just one of those like affected by COVID nineteen stock issues, but you know, just keep watching. Or we have other different kinds: sleeveless shirts, sweatshirts. It's starting to get. Creeping towards the cooler season up here in the States. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, long sleeve shirts, short sleeve shirts. There's a whole different types of things you can get there uh, uh, from the Smashy collection or, lo or logo collections. Uh, Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud or, you know, whatever your localization version of it is. Uh, you can also become a patron, get the uh, access to the VOD of the entire episode. Uh, the day after we record it, um, or, or and as well as an audio version, or um, and you can also send us money directly by going to paypal.me slash cups out loud if you just want us to be like, hey, here's some more money, maybe you can afford to get better bandwidth or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is just Skype, so don't don't look at me. You can uh, follow us or uh, rate us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us at Google Play Podcasts, and over on Spotify. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box Set, Box Puppet, Box Cup, Box Cup, or other, as well as Wind Gem on Twitch if you want to watch us play D&D &D every Sunday. There's nothing I don't like a motivator of D&D &D players and threatening to. to uh, 
uh, threaten their pet. I did not threaten to kill it, although they, it was it probably was implied by the players. But let me just fix that. And uh, you can also, uh, yeah, that's it. That's that's all I got. I got distracted. <laughs> Because my, my my Twitch Twitch name was spelled wrong, but that was just based off of how they heard it. They never saw it. So, Damon, <laughs> if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub Seven Nine on most bear related sites, or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. It is definitely not safe for work. The Twitter, not the bear stuff. Anyway. If you would like to find me online, you could pretty much uh, look up Gabber73. That's G A R B E A R 73. Uh, however, that is not me on Twitter. That is some other person that hasn't used their account in seven years. So, <laughs> uh, on Twitter, uh, to replace Tumblr, it is Gabber73XXX. So there you go. And with that, uh, say goodnight, everybody, all pixelated. <laughs> Ciao for now. Everybody got to see my dance because I didn't switch to the logo until after. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Oopsie. It's not a bad thing. Everybody got to uh, try dance, right? Well, and you could, you know, make that a new pattern and just save the logo for afterwards for the little, you know, post-show diatribe, you know, stuff. Yeah, I suppose. Anyway, that's um.